What's up everybody? Bear with me for this longer video because today I'll be talking about my guide to playing a druid. Many people ask me how I play and what to use, so I hope this answers them and covers all the grounds. Druids, at least on my server, were a small underdog class. As a tank, there was always demand for support druids, so to not always depend on others to heal me, I leveled my druids so I can be self-sufficient in healing my tank, Cecil. It became my favorite class to play because there was more to the class, so I didn't quite settle on being a straight support support druid. Starting, I didn't always know the ins and outs, but I continued to learn and explore different ways of playing. When the global arena came out, I started PvPing, and in turn would increase my understanding of how to maximize the potential at an endgame and PvP level. Today I'll be drinking down how I like to play endgame druid. I just want to clarify that this isn't the best and only way to play. This is what I've learned throughout the years, and hopefully this will be of help to other aspiring druids. And if you're a veteran player and you notice something I'm not putting light on, then you're free to to create your own guide. I will cover all things druid from level 180 to 220. We will be looking at stat builds, abilities, skills, pets, mounts, hot swapping gear for support and DPS builds, end game gear, and level 220 PvP strategy. Now you may be wondering, see I'm not anywhere near those levels, blah blah blah. To that I say enjoy the low level times, use what you can, and utilize this video to get an idea of what you might want to look for in the future. Feel free to pause and replay the video as you desire because I will be trying to cover a lot of information in the quickest convenient manner. Let's first get into stats. Focus, it says on the stat column, it boosts all your skills and adds energy, while Vitality adds to your health points. Where to put your points is not rocket science by any means, uh, but it's beneficial to follow certain ratios. I like to play with the full focus builds for more power and damage. However, depending on your gear, you may have to allocate some points into Vitality so you can take a few hits. Just don't put more into Vitality than Focus unless it's like for PvP reasons, which I'll talk about later. By level 180, you'll have 900 skill points to spend. I prefer these builds. It's pretty much the same throughout level 220. Level 200, you'll have 1000 skill points applying the same or similar percent. By 220, you'll have 1,100, which I usually go full focus, but you can still apply the same things, you can have a little vitality. Abilities. So the most important druid abilities are nature's magic and critical skills. Nature's magic improves all druid skills, while critical skills improves the chances of those skills and heals doubling in size. I never got around to leveling totem because I've never used the totem, but I think it's important to have it maxed out if you want to be a totem build later. Using your totem will upgrade your critical strike. Stabs were abandoned by developers. I wouldn't use them unless it was for a joke. Don't use a staff. Make sure you have a Scholar and Treasure Hunter, and have all five evasion abilities. Factions, if you're wondering which one to join, I wouldn't. Reaver is the best way. Reaver is useful for the great PvP rings, and they have pretty decent stats for leveling. The sooner you get to tier 3 faction, the quicker you can start the Lich Raids. I wouldn't buy the jewelry at the lower tier shops, because they are worse, and you can't resell them uh, to players, because there are no trade. So all druid skills are boosted by nature's magic and focus. Uh, let's first look at what not to use on a regular bossing and leveling basis. I think as for all classes, first aid skills are not a good place to put your points. So abundant aura. It seems like a nice skill. It adds roughly over a thousand HP when it's max and it spreads to all your group members. But in my opinion, it's not the best use of points. But I guess if you want to be group support druid, it's good. Spring of life is like a buffed resurrection idol. If points are tight, it's not something I recommend. It isn't terrible. It's best to use if there is minimal healers or the tank dies a lot. It resurrects your battle mount as well, which is a plus. Sanctuary, in my opinion, is probably the worst druid skill there is. It's an extremely downgraded mage energy shield, and at 45 points, it only shields from roughly a thousand damage and has an insanely long recast time. There is recast gear. Calm can be quite useful while leveling or keeping the aggro off you in groups or you're dealing more damage. However, I think it works sometimes when you just cast it with no points. I wouldn't put points into that. Energy Harvest zaps energy from mobs and players. It isn't necessary if you level with energy elixirs or even a decent amount of sigs. Another skill best not used, however it's proven quite nice in the PvP setting and be pretty devastating to low energy warriors. Rescue move 
moves your group members to where you are. It's another skill I don't recommend, but it's great for trolling your group members and maybe getting dead people out of the Bloodthorn slime. Double attack doubles your physical damage on the target. Great for totem druids. Storm touch, strangling vines, stinging swarm, and ink strike are your main skills to bring forth the damage. Storm touch is a slower cooldown but bigger damage skill that uses magic damage. It's a great damage dealer and contributes to a good skill rotation. Having cooldown gear is very important for the skill. Lightning strike is another skill using magic damage. It deals less damage than storm touch but has a quicker cooldown. Cooldown gear for this is still really important. Strangling Vines is a damage over time skill that uses magic damage. You can cast it on several mobs at a time. The damage fluctuates depending on the enemy's magic resistance. Over time it adds up. Strangling Vines can be cancelled out by other druids with higher or the same amount of skill points, so at bosses a 50 point vine is key. Stinging Swarm is another damage over time skill that uses poison damage. Poison damage is for the most part universally unresisted, so damage is consistent and doesn't fluctuate much. On mobs with less magic resistance, for example, strangling vines has more of an effect resulting in more damage, but on a boss with more magic resistance, it does less damage. With swarm in that case, it's consistent across all bosses and mobs, um, except Necro because it resists poison, but Necro's ghost adds don't, so. Shield of Bark is the druid's protective stance. It adds armor, which for one point of armor, it adds one resistant point into crush, slash, and pierce. Very important as druids have hardly any armor. It's great for casting on tanks or leveling mates or group mates. Nature's Touch is the major primary healing skill. It's a great support skill and I highly recommend setting some points aside for it. The heal isn't really enormous when maxed out, but once you add boosting gear from rings, braces, helm, occult pieces, the heal will add up. And using cooldown gear for nature's touch is really important as well. Wards are a useful buff. They add singular resist to you and your group members. Physical resistant wards are like armor, but it only helps you against the certain damage type. Elemental resist add cold, heat, and magic resistance. It's hard for me to know the benefits of physical resistant wards at endgame bosses. If your tank is really decked out in the finest gear and already has good armor from protective stance and shield of bark, I don't know how much physical wards really help, but it definitely helps other non-armory classes and even weaker tanks. For good tanks, more elemental resists might be better, but wards are really crucial in PvP, and I'll get into that later. Bless is a nice buff that boosts all 5 evasions. Even with the small amount of points in it, it adds a pretty decent amount. Um, it's good for endgame raids, but it's great for PvP against warriors, druids, and mages. It's also a 3 minute buff that's rare among most buffs. Howling Wind is a great support skill that reduces attack and makes the boss hit the tank less, making your healing job a lot easier. The bigger your warrior's defense, the more the boss will miss. Nature's Breath is the secondary skill that gives a nice group heal. If you can sling a 3000 or more Nature's Breath at Bloodthorn or other raids, the squishy DPS group members will love you. And now high Nature's Breath is more attainable with the gear that's available now. And in some cases, it's better to have a 3.5 K nature's breath than a singular 6,000 nature's touch heal on multiple group members. Nature's embrace is okay for extra heals. Possibly one druid using would be beneficial. You can max it for leveling and not use nature's touch. It's a preference for me. I never really put points into it, but it doesn't hurt for a support druid. Abundance is the bigger health point boosting skill. If you were to add the skill to your support build, I'd choose it over abundant aura, but it depends. And it's great for for PvP against mages and druids when you don't have to put points into Bark. Also using it uh, with a few hot swaps will give you a decent boost without any points. Grasping Roots is a nice solo leveling skill. It has some end game raid uses. Not good for PvP. So pets. The, these are my recommended pets to use. Purple Phoenix is my favorite. I highly recommend it as it gives great bonuses to Vitality and Focus, Physical Attack Evasion, Spell Attack Evasion, and all Elemental Resist, including Poison. Poison Resistance helps a lot at Bloodthorn. Another important aspect of the Purple Phoenix is its skill. When using it at level 6, it will automatically decrease magic resistance by 400, along with bonus damage to mobs 6 meters nearby, which is improved by its ability level. This makes your attacks a lot stronger. It's 
great for PvP, and it stacks with the Storm Rage offhand and Magic Lures. I used an Eagle leveling up and maxed its ability as a result. Its skill dealt around 2000 crushing damage and reduced evasions. It's not the best skill, but it adds a little extra DPS as well as some extra focus, and it's a budget option. Another budget option is a hair. They're another alternative to boosting your focus, magic resistance, spell attack evasion. Uh, the skill boosts your health and energy, and I've been told at a max 220 ability it heals around 1200 HP and energy, which is pretty nice. Giant Hatchling, uh, the magic version, is a, another DPS option. Its damage can exceed 2000 with a max ability, and it has added ticking damage. I picked the wolf because it's another budget option. You can get a little more attack if you're trying to go for a total build. Battle mounts. War Elks are the caster's favorite and I highly recommend. It comes with attributes that are good for druids, some evasion bonuses, and magic damage skill. It also acts as a short bolas. This is a great skill for DPS and PvP. However, we do die a lot at raids, which dampens having a battle mount for endgame purposes. War Bears are great for PvP and survival purposes. I happen to use it for PvP, but any other mount will give you an advantage. War Wolves are good too. They use a piercing damage skill. All endgame raids usually have a pierce lure. War taggers use slash, which is a less common lure at a raid, and war horses which use crush. So you can certainly play with simple hotbars and no hot swaps. It's simple and easy, or you can elevate your character. Even starting small with one or two rings makes you better off than before. Hot swapping will first help you with any points problems you may have, and then it will help you achieve more damage and faster cooldowns. All armor and weapon slots can be hot swapped. For jewelry, only the highlighted slots can be swapped on your hotbar. As you can see, the skill rings are swapped and the attribute rings are kept in the permanent slots. If you're still building up your druid, skill rings and the perma slots are not bad, but those are the rings you eventually want to replace with better jewelry from Gelebron and Bloodthorn rings. Don't gear your non-swappable slots with buffing rings or bracers. Uh, all buffing rings and braces should be swapped. If it's all you have, just don't settle on that gear in your perma slot. To put anything on your hotbar, uh, you first have to click favor on the bottom left and it will appear in your equipment section. Then you can search for it and place it on your hotbar. For example, you can put a Troll Lightning Strike Helm on your hotbar and click it before you cast Lightning Strike, and it will automatically equip that item and acquire that bonus. Then you can put another helm on your hotbar, like the Nature's Touch Helm, and you can switch between those, making your skill more powerful. You can hot swap between helms, rings, weapons, braces, armor items, more rings, more armor, all with the same goal of making you stronger. Just make sure to have another item in the same slot to hot swap, otherwise you can just keep it in the perma equipped section until you have something else as to not take up extra hotbar space. Here we have some points in lightning strike, but once I swap these items, then lightning strike will be fully maxed. Just make sure when you are reskilling to put the items for that skill on first before you put the points, so you don't put more points into the skill than you need. The more you hot swap, the more hotbar space you'll need, so it's helpful to buy a little plat and purchase some hotbar space. A good amount of pages to have is probably around 5. The max amount available is 10, but you probably won't need that much. Cooldown swapping helps you cast skills faster while using other items in between. You can cooldown swap any item with a percent reduction. For necro braces, you'll need the cooldown brace on the hotbar with the ring for that same skill like storm touch, and another brace and ring for that for that skill like lightning strike. So you click the brace and ring first, then you equip the other brace and ring or any other skill that you would use. The skill will be usable at the quicker cooldown rate as soon as it is done but the brace and ring need to be equipped again before you use the skill. Using more than three items to swap for one skill will make it look like it reset, but as long as you re-equip everything, it'll be usable at the cooldown rate. By level 180, you should have a full Dragon Lord set available. I like to use the boots for Shield of Bark, however, to replace those Dragon Lord pieces. I prefer to use the Ancient Beast Bone 
Lightning Strike and Nature's Touch Troll Helms for extra damage. Beast Bone Wrist Guards add 300 to Lightning Strike. Any tier of Troll Helm adds points and extra damage. For example, like Majestic adds 525 damage and 7 points to Lightning Strike. Ancient Beast Bone Legs add 500 damage to Storm Touch. Dragon Lord Sandals use Nature's Magic and Shield of Bark points. And if you're feeling crazy, you can swap the Lightning Strike Wrist Guards with Alchemical Wrist Guards, which add damage to Storm Touch. An Ancient Beast Bone Rose adds a good bonus to nature's touch but if you use a dragon lord robe uh, uh, that works as well you have the option of using a mordress helm with your dragon lord armor to keep the dragon lord aura i think they're good for pvp but i didn't use any mordress helms leveling or bossing however if you like them i'd recommend a visions or mysteries helm at level 180 using a lightning strike recast skull is essential i highly recommend it accompanied with a eldritch grimoire of mysteries the offhand could set you back 600 50k uh, gold in shop or you can buy it off someone for 450 to 550k. I don't recommend the other two offhand books. If you don't get your hands on a school using a Mordris book or Dragon Lord Codex, Grimoire of Thorns adds a nature's magic but any variety works. You can also use a Dragon Lord totem. These spider rings and charms are the best gear to use at level 180 but they're not always readily available. Necro recast bracers shouldn't be too hard to find. I would keep them in the perma slot as there isn't much of a range of good braces to use at this level. Ember Drake braces are a good placeholder. Having at least one corruption ring in the perma slot is a good bonus to nature's magic. Augur rings of the Sierra are the best swarm rings in the game and these corrupted gardens and tower rings are great for swapping or putting in the perma slot if you don't have anything else in the meantime. By level 190, a requirement for occult armor. I use many armor pieces from occult which you can get from this guy at the Bridge of Despair using minor, lesser, common, greater, and grand vials, but I suggest collecting them beforehand so you can have them at level 190. With this gear you can get your heal over 3000 if you equip the right items. A cult chest adds 400 damage to lightning strike and 275 healing to nature's touch, which would replace the ancient beast bone chest. A cult wrist guards add 900 to storm touch. I keep the ancient beast bone pants for the storm touch bonus, and I swap EDL boots for uh, the bark bonus, and a cult boots for the 350 healing bonus. You can swap beast bone wrists if it fits on your hotbar. At level 190, Garanak Shriverwood and Stonebark Necklaces are your best bet for druids at that level. They provide good focus and vitality bonus. Stonebark has the same stats as a Shriverwood Necklace and it's easier and cheaper to come by. Spirit Steed is okay but the decks won't help you much. And cheaper and more common alternatives are these two amulets here. Uh, they're better than nothing and they're good placeholders until you get something better. I'm not fond of luxury items and I don't really recommend them as they are expensive and not really great value and also really hard to resell. If you get your hands on an imperial or godly corruption ring as a perma equip option, uh, they make up for the lost nature's magic. Here are some examples of how you might set up your hotbar but do what works for you. Despite not being a druid, my level 199 mage is a better example of what a pretty base level caster should look like. But more importantly, the hot bars and how I set it up using the gear I have to the best of its abilities. With the current swaps, he has no point deficit. Everything is maxed that should be maxed and the extra points go into energy shield. It's an example of how much hot swapping helps with very basic gear. You don't need the best. It's not realistic to, to have the best of everything. And by level 205 to 210, there are a few upgrades you can look out for. Getting full exalted dragon lord armor is a must. And there are some other good options that are the best amulets to use before using bloodthorn and dino amulets. Some stand-in amulets include skein shrivwood, stone bark, and spirit steed necklaces or you can get the set. If you don't have much to hot swap for Misk, I'd prefer the Skein set, but I swap out the Skein ring for a Garanak ring for more focus. Spirit Steed and Stonebark sets are decent placeholders until you have better items. The tier 4 Lux amulet is decent as well, but I don't recommend wasting your gold on one. If a Bloodthorn or Dino amulet is in your sight, you would lose a ton of gold selling it back to the Shaman Lux vendor because it's a no trade item. 
Reaver Ring stats are pretty good to have permanent equip, but if you have Spider, Gelebron, or Bloodthorn Rings, I'd use them over Reaver Ring. However, these are good rings for PvP as well. These are the best Swarm Rings in the game. Alternatives are Alchemic Rings. Always hot swap these as long as it's 50 points. 49 or less, it will get overcasted by other Druids with uh, 50 points. And by 200, can upgrade to a Runic Grimoire. The stats aren't really that much better, and I also keep the the lightning strike skull. The wolf mother doesn't have any resist, so for the heck of it, here is a demonstration of the damage with exalted dragon lord, mix occult, and dutch ghoul. There's nothing in the stats or any jewelry except for a lightning strike cooldown ring, storm touch cooldown brace, and a ring to max storm touch, and I'll add up the 10 casts each, not counting critical shots. Damage is always random, but operates within a minimum and maximum range. Uh, the damage seems to fluctuate higher between Storm Touch, while Lightning Strike fluctuates smaller with more consistent hits. EDL has low and stagnant damage, but it seems to me a uh, mixed occult is the winner for more DPS for the common druid. Obviously, Dutch Ghoul blows EDL and mixed occult out, but many don't have the luxury of having one of these sets, but it's just to show how nice it is. From around 210 to 220, you can really start working towards the druid you want to become. The Bloodthorn lines of jewelry have been a game changer for amulets. Bloodthorn drops two different varieties called Transcendence and Transmutation, ranging from royal to godly. Transmutation pendants have the same stats as Transcendence, however it lacks elemental resists. Transcendence pendants have elemental resists, a very minor distinction. Any will suffice at the end game, but having elemental resists will benefit you in PvP. Both pendants have poison resists, which really help at Bloodthorn raids. Dino drops amulets with similar stats, one for totem druids and one with stats similar to transmutation, but with a small nature's touch bonus and energy bonus. The best tier has 200 more points of focus than a godly transmutation. If I had to choose between the best amulets, I'd probably go with the godly transcendence. These are the best druid charms in the game. Using any tier will greatly improve your character. The nature's breath variety is a must have for support druids. I currently have a royal transmutation and it worked great. I would keep it perma equipped if DPSing at bosses is the main priority for you. Bloodly free cast rings are very good for recast use in the perma equip slot. You can use one or the other, or both Storm Touch and Lightning Strike rings, but I think it's better to use just one. I currently lucked out and have the Godly Lightning Strike recast ring. It's probably one of the best druid rings in the game. Before I used a royal version for a good amount of time and they still worked great. I personally keep Lightning Strike as a permanent ring and cooldown swap a necro bracer or a dino recast if you have one to leave room for more dps rings bloodthorn dps and support rings are absolutely phenomenal having any tier is quite a luxury there are three varieties with nature's touch bonus lightning strike bonus and lightning strike and totem ability bonus which are basically buff necro rings transmutation rings give a hefty bonus to lightning strike focus and nature's magic arguably better than gelebron ring counterparts termination rings cater to the totem druid i have yet to see one drop on rose murder though and transcendence rings which are great for for boosting nature's touch. Gelebron drops choice hot swapping rings, which are upgrades from spider rings. Even mighty rings are quite helpful. These are good for having permanently equipped if you don't yet have bloodthorn rings. If you want to opt for a stronger storm touch, uh, these are the rings for that very purpose, as bloodthorn, to my knowledge, does not drop storm touch ability rings. I prefer a balanced DPS style by getting lightning strike boosts from Gelebron weapons, bloodthorn rings, and Gelebron ring swaps. And for storm 
Charm touch damage, I get damage from Gelebron weapons, Bloodthorn Charm, and Gelebron ring swaps. So I'm not prioritizing one over the other. As you can see, the Imperial version of the Bloodthorn ring surpasses the benefits of a godly Gelebron ring, uh, which those rings are very rare. I definitely use a godly as a swap option and keep Bloodthorn rings in the perma equipped slots. If all you have are Gelebron rings, that's nothing to complain about. They are quite good. Of the four bracers, Gelebron drops for Druid, I prefer two, which are the Earth and Sky and Shelter Braces. Sheltering should only be used for hot swapping, and Earth and Sky for hot swapping, or you can put it in the permanent equip. DPS Druids will argue the Ember Drake Bracer of Lightning is a better DPS permanent equip option, and I definitely agree. His good brace options are pretty slim. Protus Jewelry isn't very good for Druids, especially for permanent equipping. Nature's Touch and Breath Rings are rubbish. Hot Swapping, the Bark Ring, and Hallowing Wind is okay, but the stat bonus is Vitality and isn't going to boost those skills. I'd much prefer a Great Oak Ring because they have Nature's Magic to boost the skills slightly. It isn't bad to use a Crimson or azure braces in a permanent equip slot. And for totem druids, the deck strength attack braces are definitely a must-have. Dino Greer is phenomenal because the bracer options are the best in the game. I'd use one of these nature's touch bracelets which can also be stacked with a Mordris bracer for a bigger heal. These bracelets are a DPS druid's dream and any of these in the perma equip slot would help you deal some serious damage. I never thought I'd see some endgame war gear but these are great for hot swapping for some extra ward points. Gelebron weapons are the go-to weapons for druids and are relatively available. If you're going for support and you hot swap two different tiers of breath and nature's touch totems, the weapon's heal skill will reset. You have to use the same tier of weapon to not reset the skill, or you can just use one of the totems. For DPSing, I like to swap storm touch and lightning strike totems with any tier because the heal skill doesn't really matter to me when I'm just DPSing, but it's a plus to have the same tier of totem. These are the best dino weapons that are above godly. I'm sure any variety of these weapons is good. If you're lucky enough to get one of these and good for you, but if you're using an Imperial or Godly Lightning Strike recast ring, with this recast totem you can get rid of that ring and replace it with another Bloodthorn Lightning Strike ability ring. The DL and EDL quest offhand skill is used for cancelling the Gelebron skill on tanks, which drops the tank's HP really quickly, otherwise I'd use a Lux Grim for daily reuse. There are three Druid Corrupted Garden offhands that are leveled up using Echoes of the First Warden, which you get from the faction weekly quest. Once you get them to tier 8, it gives you its skill. Then you can upgrade them up to tier 10 with seeds of corruption that drop from Bloodthorn. All offhands give much needed poison resistance for Bloodthorn raids. Storm Rage is the DPS option which gives big divine damage. The Storm Rage offhand also drops a magic resistance by 400. Grace is the support option which gives a nice small bonus to nature's touch and breath and the skill is the same as the EDL skill but it adds a little heal for a combined 2300 HP. Boon offhands boost both the worst druid skills. The skills in AoE poison resist buff that only lasts for 15 seconds. Both the grace and storm rage offhand skills far outweigh this and I don't recommend using it. I'd personally put my two seeds of corruption into the storm rage awaken offhand because the extra divine damage for DPS. Dutch Ghoul Armor is the best armor in the game for Druids in terms of across the board consistency. Combined it adds 400 Vitality, 400 Dexterity, 1600 Focus, as well as 2700 Nature's Magic, and a decent bonus to Lightning Strike and Nature's Touch. Combined, that's over 2400 Attribute Points, 1300 more than what's allotted to you at level 220, which is 1100. Using a full set has a world of a difference, and if you have an opportunity to get a set, it's a game changer. If you're lucky enough to have both the Bloodthorn Helm as well as a set, then it's a cherry on top. Of the support druid routes, there are a few different types. The group support druid, which is predominantly group skills like nature's breath, sanctuary, abundant aura, maybe some wards, and a smaller nature's touch. Then there's a singular support druid that focuses on one person mainly being the tank. They would use a bigger nature's touch, bark, 
hallowing wind, abundance, bless, a smaller breath, and maybe some wards too. And certainly you can mix the two and add buffs as you desire. As a predominantly DPS druid, I've never opted for a full support build. I always unequipped my DPS rings and replaced them with nature's touch gear. I always went for a bigger heal and never got around to using nature's breath, mostly because clan gear limits. But if you choose to use nature's breath gear, that still is good. I'll show you some swaps you can do. For the best heal, use an occult chest, occult shoes, nature's touch helm, EDL pants, and gloves for a more nature's touch centric build. A big nature's touch is ideal for focusing on a tank. Main driller can include nature's touch, spider, gelebron, and blood form rings, the mordress brace, and an ember drake healing bracer. You can also stack the dino bracer with the mordress brace. A nature's touch gelebron weapon gives your heal a really nice boost, but if you're going to swap with the breath totem, make sure you have the same tier to not reset the skill. And as an offhand, obviously use a tier 8 grace offhand. To preserve my gelebron skill, I use an Ember Drake recast charm for nature's touch rather than using a recast skull. Charms from Majestic to Godly all work really good, but if you want to use a Bloodthorn charm, then substituting a ring for a Bloodleaf nature's touch recast ring isn't bad at all. Having a 25-40% to cooldown rate would far outweigh the benefits of a nature's touch ring that boosts 400 HP. As an upgrade, getting dodge pants and gloves will make your heal a lot stronger. At this Bloodthorn, I was focusing on the tank. I used nature's touch cooldown miss so I could use the weapon heal skills. And in between cooldowns, I threw on the buffs and hallowing wind. A support druid is pretty straightforward, but it takes time to gather rings and gear. But if you're slinging a 3.5k heal or more, then that will really help keep the tanks alive. A few exceptions to not using a cult and using a full EDL set is at the 215 I boss and Gelebron. You'll be dying a lot from the chaos damage and it's just better to use EDL for those guys. But for Protus, full occult works really good as well as Bloodthorn. By having the tank stand more inward and not all the way at the wall, you can spam heals from the max nature's touch casting distance to avoid the area of effect damage. Other than that, mixed to cold is the best. For me, my endgame DPS builds are often mixed with the remnants of PvP builds, but when I really commit to it, I think this method works pretty well. This particular Bloodthorn video I posted is slightly outdated, but I didn't use a cooldown swap. At the time I didn't need to because I didn't really have the brace options, so having it permanently equipped worked well for me. Now my build is the same, but you see that I removed the misc hot swaps and only place weapons, rings, and bracers on the hotbar. I would prefer to have another lightning strike ring, but I use this ring as a filler. I'll use the earth and sky brace, bloodthorn pendant, godly lightning strike recast ring, and keep the storm touch miss permanently equipped for its good focus bonus. Blue coven hat for good looks, and a purple phoenix as my pet. And for DPSing, I'd prefer an elk, but Mr. Bear is all I have, so it's what I use, and you normally die anyways, so it doesn't matter. And all the points go into to focus, put the Storm Rage offhand skill on my hotbar, extra points in Bark, Slash Ward, and Bless, or whatever you like. Personally, I think putting into a Halloween Wind will really help at the raids. And let me go ahead and test out the damage. Again, it could be better, but I make do with what I've got, and there's definitely better jewelry out there. And this was from an older Bloodthorn, but you can see that there's always skills running, so you need to have a good skill rotation. And it's good to run focus foods, and there's also a new nature's magic food out as well. Although this is an old setup, it's still out DPS the mages, at, and I got the kill. And that's not really my main thing when I'm at raids, is to get the kill, but it's reassuring, I guess. So when the Global Arena was released, I was really happy because it's what the game really needed, an offshoot activity that can be improved and gain advantages over other players rather than just bossing. With that said, I'll go through a few basic fundamentals for dueling, what builds I do for specific classes. Having all your points and vitality is the route I usually go. The downfall is that your damage will be decreased, but that's why you'll need jewelry that boosts your focus and skill damage like Reaver Rings and Bloodthorn Rings. and also hot 
swapping Gelebron rings. First, working to obtain a Purple Phoenix will help you the most in PvP. It has important physical attack and spell attack evasion, resists, vitality, focus, as well as a minus 400 magic debuff that makes a huge difference. Then choosing a battle mount, any work. I personally went with a bear, but that's my preference. I'd use full EDL with a Mordris Helm. EDL gives elemental resists and as well as the Exalted Dragon Lord aura. And probably a Visions Helm, but any with a health point bonus focus or vitality help. If you have Dutch Bull, definitely use that over EDL. Using Reaver Rings really help if you don't have Bloodthorn Rings, but I definitely prefer Bloodthorn Rings with Nature's Touch and Lightning Strike. They help you a lot, and also having a Lightning Strike Recast Ring is definitely preferable while hot swapping the Storm Touch Recast Brace. There's also a very nice ring called the Bane of the Deathless. It's a really rare ring that drops in the Corrupted Gardens. It comes with a Magic Lure skill. This skill is boosted by focus and if you stack it with the Phoenix or the CG offhand, it can probably relinquish a warrior's magic resist for a short time. If I had this ring, I would probably keep it hot swapped and cast it at the start of the duel, then switch to my other rings, definitely not keeping it permanently equipped. All DPS skills should be maxed or near maxed. While the skill damage will be relatively weak, it's important to have all of them maxed and hot swap as much as possible. Against warriors, rogues, rangers, shield the bark is a skill that should be maxed no matter what so you don't die too quickly. Wards help decrease physical and elemental damage. I would put points into the Pierce Ward to protect against rogues, spear warriors, and rangers. It also protects against pierce damage from a warwolf's owl skill. And put points into Ward of Giants to protect against warriors with hammers. It's not really necessary to put points into it unless you duel someone with a dino hammer, but blunt PvP warriors aren't really that common. Also small hot swaps to cast the skill will protect against a warhorse's trample, which uses crushing damage. Put points into Ward of Soldiers to help against resisting slash damage. This is a must against warriors that use a Gelebron axe or any dino axe or sword. and protects against war tigers using a slash skill as well. Elemental resists are quite useful in PvP. Points in Ward of Magic is a must against other druids. Putting a few points in also helps against the Gelebron axe skill, which uses magic damage. Dutch Ghoul Rogues have magic damage, as well as the War Elk's magic skill. Ice Ward helps against mages, but if you don't have reaver rings, mages will just cancel out all your resists. Hot swapping a ring for a little bonus helps against, you know, dino weapons with the cold damage skill, and ranger dutch goal, which uses cold damage. Heat ward for fire mages is probably the same with ice mages. The ward could be completely cancelled out depending on how strong the mage is. A few hot swap points in the heat ward will help against ranger and rogues with EDL, and warriors with dutch goal, which has a heat bonus. Definitely put points into this skill if the dino weapon deals a heat damage skill. So look out for any tier ward ring, preferably plus 5 and up, to help with extra points. These rings drop from Agrigoth, while regular rings drop from the other world bosses. Dreadbone drops two different ward misks, a fire and crush misk, and the holy grail of ward gear drops from dino. Nature's touch is nerfed by half of the HP it heals for on the skill description. However, nature's touch bonus from gear is unaffected. Hot swapping gear with direct bonus is very good. Reaching a minimum of a 2k heal is ideal. I don't use Breath or Nature's Embrace. Bless is a must against druids and mages, and it's a great skill against all classes, especially warriors. The high spell attack evasions it offers can deter some attacks and hopefully save you some HP. I've started using a maxed or near max Bless against Dutch Goal Warriors, which because warrior skills can hit for really high damage, so physical attack evasion and weakening attack evasion will help you evade shatter and other skills, and it also wears down their energy. For duels only, I like to manually put two bless rings for more points before the fight starts. It has a 3 minute buff so I cast it first before all the other buffs. Maxing abundance is preferable against 
druids and mages. You can put the points you would normally put in Shield of Bark into this. And for rogues, warriors, and rangers, if you have some gears to swap, it can add a small bonus. And the skill lasts for 3 minutes. Don't max abundant aura, however, swapping a ring for this adds an extra few hundred health. Don't use grasping roots, it's really nerfed and only lasts about 6 seconds. Energy harvest is nice to mess with warriors. The skill is nerfed by half, but using a Mordris Brace with its bonus can zap up to a thousand energy off someone. I was testing it out on warriors and it stresses them out for sure, but I like my builds that don't use it just as much, if not more, because it's an extra skill to cast It can get kind of annoying. And using any kites from 3 to 15% will boost your HP, but these days they can get pretty expensive depending on the percentage. Use any DPS Gelebron totem for DPS and its extra heal skill. It is uninterruptible and heals for the full amount. If you have a CG offhand, it can add 500 to 1000 HP to the heal depending on what tier it is. I don't normally swap totems in PvP, but if you can swap the same tier Nature's Touch totem, it would really help. It makes your heal really good in a duel. CG offhands and duels really help. The Grace version adds an extra uninterruptible 2300 HP in heals. It also adds a unaffected 200 HP to Nature's Touch, so it boosts a more defensive style of playing. But using the Storm Rage offhand will boost your lightning strike and decrease their magic resistance with its skill. I generally use a Grace offhand, but the Storm Rage will help you boost your damage if it's on the weaker side. So my dueling strategy, you can see in my earlier videos how I played with different types of swaps I had. And all that to say is that it took me a while to gather what I use. You can see how my hotbars gradually improved. Back then there was tons of players to play against and practice. This was the golden age of the arena. We were mostly casual EDL players. But, but building your swaps is one thing, but how you cast your skills and move in a duel is another. You can see in one of the earlier duels with Yuri is that I always kite back and get some distance. It's usually to cast Nature's Touch, Strangling Vine, Swarm, or Lightning Strike. By doing this, it cancels their auto attack, buying you more time rather than just sitting there and taking hits. But not kiting too far, because that won't help you either, because no skills are being casted. I highly recommend using this strategy against rogues and warriors. Getting distance is called kiting back. You can see here I always get distance before the duel starts, so I can get my vines and bees casted as quick as possible. If you know that a warrior is going to use Bash at the beginning, I cast Swarm first because it casts quicker and it's uninterruptible so you can damage your opponent while you sit there frozen. In this duel against armor, it's a good example of how the kiting strategy saved me for a win by a close margin. Against these Dutch Ghoul Warriors or with EDL or not, I'm always using a maxed slash bark and points and magic ward. I'd also max bless if you can, it's very helpful against melee. A good skill routine is key. You can see here that I start with the bear skill with the countdown and then run back. Cast my vines, then bees, phoenix skill, kite back, offhand book skill, lightning strike, then storm touch, then kite back again, lightning strike, then Gelebron skill. Better to use lightning strike and let it cool down while you cast your Gelebron skill. Then I continue until the job is done. Some circumstances happen where you have to change up the rotation and it's a very close fight. Do you heal or do you try to finish them? I recommend in these instances to use your DPS skills to try to finish the fight. Against Druids, you can see here that I'm running a full max ward, bless, and abundance with a maxed heal. Bark is not needed. I like to start off with the lightning strike with Druids. You don't have to be worried about kiting back or getting interrupted. You can observe here the duel with Connie. We're both constantly running skills and using our heal because if we slack on your skill routine, then you're pretty much toast. Personally, I dread dueling mages. I recommend running a few Reaver rings to help survive, but against mages like Alien, my chances of survival are slim, and it depends mostly on how fast I can out DPS my opponent and how lucky I am to evade his LK hits. I even opted for a Storm Rage offhand to try and bring him down as quick as possible, but he's just really OP. This duel with Majin Buu, my bless was max and my abundance as well, and there was no need for a heat ward because he just cancels it out. This duel is an example of how, how useful bless is and the luck of my evasions. Rangers, 
I'm sorry to throw you guys in the shade, but against druids, you guys are the easiest class. No hard feelings to my fellow rangers. However, it's quite fun to duel spear rangers. Uh, Deimos is a great PvP ranger as well as Ziff. Against rogues, it's pretty straightforward. Points in Pierce Ward, doing the kiting strategy as well. And if they use play dead, make sure you have a dot always running. Just some key things for PvP druids. Maximizing your hot swaps, run as many skills as possible, kite, run a good skill routine, and keep improving. I hope you guys learned something from this, and remember to put your own flair into how you play. If you enjoyed this, then let me know with a like or comment, and share and subscribe if you want to see more. Have a good one. Peace.